Hey there, I'm Drew and you are listening to or watching the anxious truth this week on the podcast, we're going to do an anxiety success story. I have a young man on the podcast who went from homebound stuck in his apartment, afraid to leave to going on a world tour to promote Black Adam with Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That is a recovery success story. So let's get to that right now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the anxious truth. This is episode 261 of the podcast we are recording in early June of 2023. I am Drew Linsalata, creator and host of the anxious truth. This is the podcast that covers all things anxiety, anxiety disorders and anxiety recovery. So if you're struggling with things like panic attacks or agoraphobia or OCD or health anxiety, this is probably a good place for you to be and I'm glad that you're here. If you are a new listener, just stumbled onto the podcast or the YouTube channel. Welcome. If you're a returning listener or a returning viewer, welcome back. I'm glad that you're here. So every once in a while, I have the privilege of doing an anxiety success story on this podcast. And if you've been listening to the podcast or watching the YouTube channel for any length of time, you may have seen some of those. I have a collection of them on the YouTube channel, you can look at a playlist called recovery success stories. And today we're going to do one of those. These are some of my favorite episodes to do. I have John Brandon Cruz on Cruz is a video editor. He's a social media professional. He's a filmmaker. And he went from glued in his apartment, unable to leave panic attacks, rolling throughout the day, agoraphobia, to traveling with Dwayne the Rock Johnson doing promotion for the Black Adam movie when that came out. He is by all measures a true anxiety recovery success story. And he was kind enough to spend some time with us today to go over his journey, how he wound up in that place and what he did to get out. It is an almost textbook example of what recovery looks like. I, I enjoyed doing this interview so much. So let's get to that. But before we do just a quick housekeeping note, remember that the anxious truth is more than just this podcast episode, there are 260 other free episodes, there's a ton of free social media content. There are books that I've written on anxiety and anxiety recovery. There are courses and workshops and all kinds of goodies that you can find on my website at the anxious truth.com. If you have been following along here, and you are using my my content or using my information and recovery, if you're enjoying it, if it's helping you, and you want to find a way to support it in a more formal way, all the ways that you can do that are at the anxious truth.com slash support. Now, financial support buying things is never ever required here, but always appreciated any way that you support the work that I do, whether it's liking a YouTube video, subscribing to the channel, writing a podcast review, whatever it happens to be posting a content somewhere on social uh, comments somewhere on social media and joining the community. I appreciate you, you actually make this work easier and you make it very rewarding. So thank you so much. That being said, let's get to the interview with Cruz, John Brandon Cruz, great guy, I will try and have him on more for an update down the road, you're going to dig him, let's get to it. And I'll be back at the end to wrap it up. All right, here he is, the man himself do it scared. I told you he made an amazing video. And I'm going to link that in the show notes and in the video description, go check it out. We have with us today, John Brandon Cruz, otherwise known as just Cruz. That's how everybody calls him. And I'm happy to do that too. So uh, Cruz, what up, man? Welcome. Man, this is uh, this is a very surreal experience for me. So I really appreciate you having me on the podcast. I am a surreal kind of guy, evidently. So <laughs> so from what I understand, now you and I don't know each other. Right? This is the first time we've ever actually spoken, right? So yep. uh, we, we connected on Instagram a little bit. Uh, you do tremendous work. So Cruz is in the video editing filmmaking kind of thing. I'm gonna call you a filmmaker because you made a film in my eyes. And uh, working with some very high profile clients clients and conceivably all over the world. I'm guessing you child you're traveling, right? Yeah. So working with a lot of like big celebrity clients, big movie studios doing videos for doing videos and social media for like massive film properties and stuff like that. And yeah. over the last 10 years, really, I've traveled all over the world I mean, uh, doing, doing social media. Yeah. I mean, you could say the names if you want. I won't say them, but you guys yeah, know absolutely. these names. I mean, yeah, you know these people. So The Rock, uh, Will Smith, John Krasinski. I've done yeah. social media for movies like Spider-Man, Black Adam, uh, Ghostbusters, uh, Bullet Train, Gran Turismo. I mean, it's just, yeah, like a lot, a lot of film properties a lot of big celebrities. And basically, my job for the last 10 years has just been to run around follow these different celebrities and different movies and stuff like that with a camera and help them figure out how to tell their stories on social media. That's awesome work. If I wasn't doing this, I would love to be in your business. That was <laughs> yeah, it's really great. 
So anyway, Cruz and I connected on Instagram because I, I was not aware that you were following me. Clearly, I don't know all my followers, but somehow or other, you caught my eye because of the work you were doing. And I checked it out. I'm like, this is amazing because it was amazing, cool work that you do. And uh, then when you sent me the, the Do It Scared video, it blew me away. So you are a success story if I've ever seen one. But let's preface that by saying every success story is a little different. So some people come to these success stories and they will say, I'm completely and utterly recovered. Others will say they're halfway there, they're down the road, it's in progress. There's no right or wrong in this. Where were you? Give us the give us the story here. Where did you start and where are you now? Where did I start in terms of Yeah, um, like your anxiety problems? Oh, okay. Yeah. So I had my first panic attack when I was I wanna say I was about fifteen years old. Okay. And I was I was smoking weed with my friends, ripping a bong. And <laughs> next thing you know, I'm just you know, what is, oh, what's going on? What's, what am I feeling? And then it was that all too familiar feeling that, you know, that we've heard, that you've talked about a million times on your podcast that so many of us have experienced where that in that wall of impending doom was headed my way. Yeah. And I didn't know what was happening. And so that was the very first one I had. And then over the course of about 20 years, it had been something I'd been struggling on and off with. Mm -hmm. And when I started working with these like super high profile celebrities and um, working on these big projects where I, f I was feeling the pressure to perform and to be this uh, professional, mm -hmm. it came in a, in a way I hadn't experienced before. And I think I felt now that there was so much at stake because my whole career was, you know, I was, I, I had, I had worked so hard to get to this place. So there was just all this confusion and the panic attacks last year started to ramp up to yeah. a point where, yeah, just, it got to a point where there was a day where I, it was like rolling panic attacks last year. I remember the day and I was actually traveling with the rock yeah. and we were, we were shooting some videos and stuff. And I just told the team and I told him, I was like, guys, I have to, I have to step away to figure out, what this is. That was my rock bottom moment with anxiety where I felt like I was drowning in it so severely that it had just become this all consuming thing that I felt like, how am I ever going to get out of this, this hole? Yeah. And um, actually your podcast was the first glimmer of, oh, wait, I, I will be able to get out of this. It's just going to take a lot of hard work. Yeah. But I'm, I'm no stranger to hard work. I mean, my whole career has been just just go for the things you want and if you don't get it right away it eventually you just got to keep you know persistence is the name of the game yeah and so listening listening to the anxious truth was like to me that was that that promise that somewhere down the line i would i would recover yeah. and i and i had faith in that so it took about two months i'll say of like all day every day working at it to where I was, I felt like I, I, I wouldn't say I was like done with it, but I felt, okay, I'm on, I'm getting to the other side of this thing. Yeah. So it was, it was about 60 days of a combination of therapy, a, a ton of exp, a exposure therapy. So, yeah. you know, just all day, every day, five, six times a day, I would go do things that I didn't want to do. Okay. Uh, going to the gym, you know, working out, as you know, huge trigger because yeah. your heart, starts to increase you don't you know you're, you're experiencing a lot of the same symptoms yeah so that brings me to about i'd say that was in like august september of last year mm -hmm. and now i'd say i'd say i'm like 95 percent of the way recovered yeah so that was like a like a two-month boot camp almost you know you were in it man yeah, I'd say it was like the Olympics of uh, <laughs> because luckily, you know, I'm, I'm in a position where I work for myself yep. and I can step away from work when when I when I need to. Yeah. Uh, so I just told everyone around me, I was like, this is priority number one. This is my full time job. And I just did. That's what I did. I made it my full time job. You know, I'll never forget. I would go to restaurants, which would be like a huge trigger for me. And I would set a timer on my on my phone. Mm -hmm. And so the first time I went, it was like one minute. Then it was, you know, five minutes, then 10 minutes. And then eventually I would just stop looking at the timer. And that's those kinds of things where I was like, oh, I'm 
like everything else I've done in my life, whether it's fitness or my career, it's, it's moving the pebbles every day is what moves the mountain. Yeah, I love that analogy. Moving the pebbles every day, you're 100% right. So you, you were doing stuff clearly, because I know people are going to ask, like, that's the first question everybody wants to know. Well, how did he do it? He's 95% covered. How did you do it? So you, you're hearing Cruz tell you what he did. What about when you were scared, man? Like, what happened? What were you doing? Well, listen, I'll tell you guys, um, you know, fear is still a part of my life. I still experience fear. I still experience uh, the feeling of inadequacy, of discomfort. Um, life can be scary. Life can feel scary, uh, especially like in my line of work where I, I do feel like there's a lot of pressure sometimes to perform. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's changing the relationship with fear and understanding that and this was something The Rock told me, because when I, when I called him and I was like, hey, man, I don't know what's going on, but I need to figure this out. He said, just never forget that it's, it's super uncomfortable, but it's never dangerous. Yeah. So that understanding that concept that you can feel awful, you can feel scared, you can feel, I, I still shake sometimes when I'm on set or when I'm sure. headed to a job that there's a lot of pressure but that, that doesn't mean that something bad is going to happen. Yeah. It's just it's just me experiencing those natural symptoms that we all experience in life where we, where we get scared sometimes. And one thing I wanted to tell you was like, a big thing for me, a mindset shift was, I stopped looking at an anxious moment as this feeling of impending doom that I need to run from. Mm -hmm. And I started to try to think of it like, this is a moment where you're going to learn a valuable lesson about yourself. You're going to learn something really important about how you are going to navigate the rest of your life. Yeah. So instead of feeling fear about those moments coming, look at them as teachers and, and think, oh, I'm excited to experience more moments of fear because on the other side of those moments is a better version of me. Yeah, that's 100%. I, I cannot, I so appreciate what you're saying here, because those things ring true in recovery. It, you know, people think that recovery is, oh, making my anxiety go away. And yeah, that's the happy side effect in the end, most of the time. But really, when you say you learn things about yourself, do you find that the, that experience of going through those two months and sort of clawing your way out of the hole? Is that stay with you every day? Are you bringing lessons with you now that you can use? Man, it changed, it changed my life. I mean, one thing I'll say, and if you're listening to this and you're like in the hole right now, you you may not fully understand this, but one day you will. Right now, you think of your fear and anxiety as the worst thing that's ever happened to you. Mm -hmm. I look at it now as the greatest gift that I ever experienced because now I, now I, I have clarity about my life and, and actually like a fortified sense of self that I before I felt like I was just going through the motions. Mm -hmm. Now I know like what I am capable of overcoming. Yeah. So I think that to sort of answer your question, it fundamentally changed the way I view my human experience. Mm -hmm. And now I, I feel like it's like, <laughs> it's like in the matrix when Neo gets unplugged from the matrix and he's like now living life. I actually now feel like because of this gift, yeah. this experience, which like I said, most people won't know what that is until they're on the other side of it. That's correct. Now I feel like I'm part of something like with you and with millions of other people who have come across it and mm -hmm. gone to the other side where we can like look at each other and say, look at what, look at what we've accomplished. Yeah. Yeah. People often think it's crazy when like, you know, well, you know, what did you take out of it? And I'll say things like, I hate that I went through that experience, but I would do it again tomorrow if I wound up here. And I think it's really hard to put your brain around that when you are in the struggle because you're seeing it in through your current lens. But when you get to the other side, this is what's waiting. It's not just me. See, it's not just me. Here's another person telling you the same thing. I love that, brother. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I so appreciate you sharing that. So what well, happened on the days when, like, now you got to get out the door and you're every, you said for 60 days, I yeah. got up five, six times a day and I did things that I was afraid to do. How did you, these are the common questions, so I'll do, I'll ask them preemptively. Please. Please. When your brain is screaming at you to not do this, how did you do it? I mean, I kind of know what you're going to say, but people need to know. Um, well, it's a battle that you get better at at winning over time because, and I don't know if battle is the right word, but it's, it's a situation that 
in the beginning, let's say you do five exposure therapies in a day. Mm -hmm. um, in the beginning, you might only get through three of them. Yeah. You know, and, the t and you might actually have, you know, panic attacks. Mm -hmm. But, you know, through that experience, you, you realize, oh, I, you know, I'm fine. I, I felt super uncomfortable. I had a panic attack. I, I went on a walk and for a moment I had to sit on a curb so I could catch my breath or I was driving mm -hmm. and I had to pull over for a second because my hands were getting numb. Those were all things I experienced yeah. or going to the gym. But over time, I, I, the pact that I would try to make with myself is never abandon a situation not on my terms. Yeah. So if I was at the gym or I was on a walk or I was driving, okay, if you need to take a little break, that's fine, but then get right back into it yep. and only complete the exposure therapy once you are in a state where you feel at peace, where you say, I, I did what I needed to do and I'm gonna come back to it later today or I'm gonna do it again tomorrow. Yeah, so yeah. It's gonna be hard, guys. I mean, listen, it's it's tough, tough work. It'll feel like the hardest thing you've ever done, but you know, I, I incremental, incremental. I mean, in the beginning, it was going to my mailbox um, going to get my mail. Uh, then it was like one, I would do one walk around my, my apartment complex. Mm -hmm. Then I'd walk to go see my friend. And then I, I'll never forget. It was like a huge deal for me to walk. There's like some stores that are half a mile from where I live going there was like, Oh my God, I'm never going to make it. And you yeah. know, did yeah. it. Then it was like going back to the gym. I had essentially forbade the gym. I thought I would never, I was like, Oh yeah, I'm never going to work out in a gym again. I go five days a week now. Yeah. So it's just incremental and understanding that if you do experience fear, if you experience panic, if you start to feel like you're disassociating, if your hands get shaky or tingly or all those symptoms, that you're going to be okay. It's just that you're, you're retraining a bad, you, you downloaded a bad program and yep. you're retraining. Yeah, yeah, you're right. What you're really doing is writing a, a better program next to it, and then that becomes the one that runs. So what makes it tricky is that the old program is still there. We don't erase it. And that's why sometimes you hit those bumps. Like I'm guessing you weren't on a, a straightforward trajectory. You just got better and better and better every day without limit. Should you, did you have, you must have days where you struggle. A little yes, bit. there were days. And, and I, and I don't know if it was you that talked about this. i I assume it was, but it was either you or somebody else that said that those setbacks, once you're like seemingly deep into recovery, mm -hmm. those can feel the scariest because it's like you thought, oh, I'm way past this thing. And all of a sudden, it's like in those movies when someone's having a nightmare mm -hmm. and then they think they woke up from the nightmare and then they're like in another nightmare. Yeah, That's what it feels like when, you're get, when you feel like you're kind of getting far along in recovery. But again, it's one of those things and you've, you've definitely talked about this where, you, where if I experience panic now, which I you know, I experience anxiety, I experience my heart races sometimes. Yeah, I just let it do what it's going to do. And then I immediately go on with the rest of my day. Yeah. And I just don't I don't let it change the course of, of how I'm going to go through my day. And I don't know if it was you that talked about this. But it was it's the analogy that I heard somewhere I might have been you. So apologies if it was okay. but it was, it was uh, like the like the stock market, basically, yeah, yeah. day by day, it goes up and down. But if you look at the stock over time, it's like, oh, it, it, it was heading in a direction that was up. Yeah. And and I look back at where I was a year ago. And yes, I have good days. Sometimes I can't sleep. Sometimes I'm struggling with X, Y, Z anxiety related. Mm -hmm. But if I look at where I was a year ago, I mean, it almost makes me emotional because I'm like, wow, I've come leaps and bounds from where I was. Yeah. And I, I think you start to get I mean, listen, you are in a high pressure job, there's probably a 1000 guys just waiting to do your job, they would love to work for the people you work for. So I get that sort of pressure. But that's real. That's external anxiety. Like, yes, it's a pressure filled situation where you have to perform. Can you tell the difference now? Like, oh, I'm really anxious going on this shoot, but I'm anxious because it's a high pressure situation, as opposed to I'm anxious because I'm breathing hard. And that makes me more anxious. Can you see the difference now? I, I can. And when I can't see the difference, I remind myself that that's just my brain playing tricks on me. Yeah. You know, because when you are experiencing like when when I do get a little bit of confusion about what kind of anxiety am I experiencing right now? Is this just uh, something like work related or is this is this something else? I You know, it can get a little fuzzy mm -hmm. when you're like in an anxious moment. Sure. But I always I just say, let's just get through this feeling. And then on the other side, when we're in a better spot, we can rationally think about 
yeah. what it is that we're going through. But but yeah, of course, I do take more stock lately in my life. I meditate more on my journey. And I think that, you know, and again, you've talked about this. There's a lot of literature and podcasts about like yeah. lifestyle adjustments that you can make to, yeah. Yeah. you know, whether it's journaling, meditating, all of these things, anything that allows you to go inward and reflect on difficult emotions and feelings, I think is very valid and super important. And it will help you process whatever line of work you're in. It certainly helped me to process some of those really tough, difficult, scary feelings I have about like my job and those kinds of things. Yeah, and I think it's so interesting to hear like, yeah, you're right, you gotta do that. You have scary feelings about your job, about your performance, about adequacy, whatever it happens to be, we all have our things. But first you have to put out the fire and you have to not be afraid to walk to your friend's house then you can go, you know, inward and meditate on your feelings and, and right. work out life stuff, just life shit, because we all have life shit. And sometimes these uh, the anxiety uh, disorders take that away from us. We they, they block us from working on that stuff, because we're just afraid of, of being alive for a little while. So right. And, and I, you know, I, I was doing therapy. Um, while I was simultaneously doing all of my exposure therapies, mm -hmm. I was going to see a therapist, which in a way was kind of like an exposure therapy for me going yeah it was it felt really scary to go talk to someone i didn't know yeah but what i will say was although there was things that helped me in therapy and i'm super grateful for this wonderful man that i was talking to mm -hmm. it was 100 percent the work that i was putting in in the real world getting out there exposing myself to things that felt tremendously difficult and scary yeah that those were the days where i felt the change happening within myself yeah but that's incredibly valuable work that you did at the same time. So maybe the therapist wasn't working specifically on the anxiety disorder. But when you can do all of that stuff at the same time, which is freaking hard work, man, the value in that, like, I'm sure that they they complement each other as you do in those both of those things at the same time in many times. Many right. Instances. Yeah. So well done, man. So I so now you have a better grip on just sort of like life anxiety versus disordered anxiety, which is great. I mean, where are your challenges still? Um. Hmm, that's a really good question. I think where are my challenges? Yeah, see, it, 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 when somebody has to think about their challenges, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Because yeah. because really, I feel now that um, I almost don't even look at challenges as challenges. Yeah. I just think, I think about I think about all scary things now as that's something I have to go towards because. It's uh, I look at it as an opportunity. Yeah, that's a great you know, answer. Whether it's an emotional thing or a career thing. Yeah, I don't I try not to because it's this concept of like, if you think of it like it's this challenge, then you're sort of saying to yourself where I am right now is not enough or I'm not adequate where I where I stand. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I try to just I try to just feel like. What's the best way to phrase it like? Yeah, like where I am right now is okay, and that I don't have to try to project super far into the future of my well being, like where we are today is fine. Yeah, you know, I love that. That's a really healthy outlook, you know. So I think this is where this is where people tend to get a little bit tripped up. So let's sort of wrap it up by talking about, you know, just a small little subject, courage, because courage is the part that where, where most people fall down. So when you have to start doing those scary things, and you're still at a point where you're just worried about your heartbeat and your dizziness and your breathing and all that stuff. Where does the courage come from? And, and I'll, I'll tell you, so it's not a trick question. People ask me and they want to know, but how do I do it? But, but just how do I do that? And at some point, you run out of steps. There's no more steps I can teach you, you know, on how to be brave. So what was it? At some well, point, there's a moment of decision. What did it look like for you? It, there's, there's, I'd say I have a few answers. Um, one is something you've talked about where I said, I got to the point where I was so sick like I would break down in tears because I would feel like I, my life was passing me by. Mm -hmm. And you get to a point where you go from fear to like, to sort of feeling a bit angry. And, and I, I, I distinctly remember saying, either you're gonna fucking kill me or, <laughs> or I'm going to live my life, but whatever happens, I have to do something. Yeah. Like I have to just push forward because my life is passing me by and this is the one life that I get. Yeah. You know, and I was I was I was sick of feeling like I was missing out on some of the best moments 
potentially of my life. Yeah. Uh, another place I pulled courage from was there were so many people in my life that I thought had never experienced moments of fear, whether it's people I work for, like The Rock and these big celebrity people, or like my dad yeah. or my best friends. And when I started to explain to them that I was essentially on this journey to sort of recover from panic attacks, they all sympathized and said, wow, man, that's really brave of you. Like I've experienced those kinds of, I've experienced fear, I've experienced anxiety. And so I was, I was like, I was pulling courage from those conversations because I realized that it's something that just everybody is, everybody experiences fear. Yeah. For some people it becomes really acute and it becomes panic attacks, but just just sort of understanding that that is a common a very common thing i mean if you look on any youtube video about panic attacks there's like ten thousand comments of people yeah. I've, i'm experiencing this that so i i felt like i was pulling courage just from the common experience of so many different people um and then yeah like you said it's just you run out of you you sort of just run out of excuses to make for yourself and and, and you sort of just you hit that point and i think you probably heard hundreds if not thousands of people talk about this where you're just you're done you're done living your life on the sidelines yeah for me i mean i can relate to you better come and fucking kill me because i'm done with this now like i literally remember getting to that point and kind of saying that being coming very defiant and very like put my jaw out come on hit me harder like at some point i think what it comes down to and what i hear you describing is the pain of staying still is worse than the pain of moving forward the pain of the moving forward is painful because it's scary and hard work but the pain of not moving forward now outweighs that so then you move forward right because fear is is to me a lot less scarier than regret i think <laughs> yeah i would agree with you uh in a big way because then you, you know the regret of not because every time you bail out of it, something, you know, you, you, you cancel, you just run home, you escape. It feels good in the moment, but then there's the repercussions two hours later when it's like another day, another day wasted, another day that I missed it. So I get it. I get it. I appreciate, yeah. I, and I appreciate that you acted on that and, you know, and, and you took action and you're sharing it, man. I, you're, I, I cannot thank you enough for doing that. So. Oh my God, man. I mean, listen, like I said, I don't know how I found your podcast, but it, there was, a, I distinctly remember I had a dinner hang with some friends and this was when things were still really bad. Yeah. And I came across your podcast and it was like, it was the lifeline that I needed to just begin the journey. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, like you did with, um, I'm, I'm, I'm forgetting her name. Claire Weeks. Right? Claire Weeks. Yeah. Where you took her everywhere with you. I, I took you everywhere with me, man. You were right there. And, yeah. and, and, you know, in the last, after a couple of months, I got to the point where I said, okay, I, I can't take Drew everywhere I go. <laughs> yeah. I, I got to start doing some of this, not with, with I got to start doing some of this by myself. Yeah, yeah. And, and that, you know, and still sometimes I'm be honest with your audience base out there. I have really difficult days. And sometimes I'm like, I have to, I, it's like, um, I'll throw on one of the, one of the podcasts mm -hmm. just just to sort of like recalibrate yeah. and remember, just to remember everything that I went through yeah. and to remember like, oh wait, I did, I already did all the reps. I, I know what this is. So, you know, again, it's, and I tell people, it's like in Lord of the Rings when, uh, when Frodo, he, he wears the ring and then at the end, even though he does not wearing the ring anymore, it's still, it still kind of stayed with him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like anxiety, once it, once it sort of like, stings you it never fully fully completely goes away you'll you'll always remember what those super scary panic attacks felt like but now you have the tools and you know that it's just this fleeting thing that is yeah. going to pass through you love it man very good I, I appreciate that in a big way so <laughs> um you have anything else you want to close with floor is yours no man i mean just i'm so grateful to to be on your podcast and um I think there was something that I wanted to say, maybe. You know, before you no, do that, I, let, let's throw one thing out real quick, because I know I'm trying to anticipate what people are going to say. So okay. Cruz, Cruz did it. You were hardcore boot camp 60 days, did a lot of heavy lifting in 60 days. That happened right. to be the circumstances, and I admire what you did in a big way. If you can't do it in 60 days because you can't do five exposures a day, that's also okay. I, I know that Cruz is not saying you could, you'll be better in 60 days, just to clarify that. 
If it takes you months and months because you can only do one or two a day, that's totally fine. It will go on whatever timeline you have. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Oh, and I appreciate you saying that because I know, you know, I don't have, I don't have a family. Yeah. I don't have, um, I do work a lot, but, and I luckily like working for myself, I was able to make that space. Yep. But, but yes, I, I a hundred percent agree with you that, um, it doesn't have to happen that fast. It's still the same kind of work. Yeah. But it is a great illustration of the mechanism at play wound up and let it go. It can work that fast, but right. it works yeah, the same exactly. in six months too. Right. Yeah, exactly. Very good. So, man, dude, thank you so much. And uh, it's it's weird. It's like, I don't want this to end because I'm just so grateful to be on your podcast, man. This is such a special thing for me. If you have anything you want to add at any point, just reach out. That's totally fine. And uh, I will put links to Cruz and all of his stuff in the show notes on here. So if you're on my website, go to theanxioustruth.com slash 261 for the show notes, and I'll put all the links there or in the YouTube description or the podcast notes, wherever. I'll, I'll get you over. So if you guys want to check out Cruz, he's a good dude. Um, thank you so much for coming and sharing. I appreciate it, man. If you ever want to do a follow-up, you let me know. I would love to, and I will. I will let you know, brother. Thank you. Very good. All right, guys, I'll be back in a minute to wrap it up like I usually am. Okay, we are back. That was so much fun for me to do, mostly because Cruz is kind of a textbook recovery example. So I'm not going to lie. Everything he said, I just wanted to, like, fist bump him. Uh, in some ways, it's validation. Like, see, I told you this stuff works. Of course, I would never say that, although I just did. But I always love when you get to see somebody else to talk about this. And it's not just me or not just me and Josh or the usual suspects. You get a real person who actually did this stuff and applied it and did what he had to do and came out the other side and is back to living his life and, and enjoying it and following his dreams. And man, is he ever like, what a cool job that is. So if uh, you want more on John Brandon Cruz, otherwise known as just Cruz, just a super nice guy, that's how everybody uh, refers to him. Um, you can go to theanxioustruth.com slash 261 I will have a full set of show notes uh, for this episode on that webpage, and I will put all the links to his stuff, including links to the video that he produced called Do It Scared. Uh, the Do It Scared video is amazing. It's incredibly inspirational. I loved it. So that's what prompted me to reach out and say, dude, you got to come on the podcast. So I will link that also. If you're just listening to the podcast, look at the notes on your podcast player. If you're on YouTube, look at the video description. I'll have all the stuff in there. And that's it. That's episode 261 of The Anxious Truth in the books and another anxiety success story that I hope you have enjoyed. You know it's over because the music. That is, as always, Afterglow by my friend Ben Drake. He wrote that song a few years ago, inspired at least in part by things he's heard on this podcast, and he's been kind enough to let me use it ever since in the closing credits, sometimes in the opening credits. So if you'd like to know more about Afterglow and Ben Drake, go to bendrakemusic.com, and if you do, tell him I said hello. He's a good dude. If you are listening to this podcast on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or some platform that lets you rate or review the podcast, leave a five-star rating if you dig it. If you really dig it, maybe take a minute and write a review because it helps more people find the podcast and then we get to help more people, which is why I started doing this to begin with. If you're listening on YouTube, watching on YouTube, consider liking the video, leave a comment if you have a question. I answer YouTube comments at least twice a week. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload new episodes. And that's it. Hopefully this has been really helpful. I will be back next week with another podcast episode. Don't know what I'm going to talk about, but I will be here. And remember, whatever you could do today to move in a forward direction toward recovery, no matter how small, counts. So do it. You'll be happy that you did. See you next week. No looking back or dwelling on the past You know you'll never get another chance So go and live your life